A new book says President Trump wondered whether Ghislaine Maxwell had mentioned his name following her arrest on sex trafficking charges. Welcome back to Sidebar here on Law & Crime. I'm Anjanette Levy. Ghislaine Maxwell, the British socialite who is now a convicted felon serving time in federal prison for sex crimes involving her ex-boyfriend, who's now dead, Jeffrey Epstein. Well, uh, her name is always out there in the news, it seems. And now she's coming up again since Maggie Haberman of the New York Times has written a new book about the Trump presidency. It's called Confidence Man, The Making of Donald Trump and the Breaking of America. So uh, joining me to talk about this and how uh, Trump and Maxwell are being brought up again together is Adam Klasfeld. He's the managing editor of lawandcrime.com. Adam, welcome back to Sidebar. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Yes, most definitely. Uh, so this sounds like a really interesting book. And apparently upon uh, Ghislaine Maxwell's arrest, uh, President Trump became silent, according to this excerpt from Maggie Haberman's book and said, did she say anything about me? So it kind of gets you thinking because people are always talking about how Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell socialized with a lot of famous people, including the Clintons, including President Trump, including Prince Andrew. Uh, but he's specifically saying, did she say anything about me when she's arrested? So uh, what do you think of that, that Maggie Haberman is revealing this in her new book? Well, I think that uh, it also shows Maggie Haberman to be a scoop machine. She has a way of unearthing the salient details. But beyond that, as you noted, Anjanette, this is a topic that resurfaces again and again, right after uh, Ghislaine Maxwell's arrest. There was that statement from then President Trump that he wished her well, which was not a sentiment that you heard from too many political leaders at the time. And of course, I was in the courtroom during Ghislaine Maxwell's trial when the flight logs came into evidence. We, at the time, did an article on law and crime just picking apart what the flight logs said, all of the famous people who were on board, the politically connected, and of course Trump's name was in the flight logs at that time, so was Bill Clinton's, as you noted. and. This is just saying that this is a scandal that always finds a way to reemerge. And it is very interesting. It casts on a new light uh, then President Trump's statement, I wish her well. Most definitely. And I feel like people just keep waiting for another shoe to drop. Obviously, we know that Jeffrey Epstein was connected to a lot of famous people around the globe, and he uh, committed suicide, died by suicide. Some people don't think he died by suicide, but uh, the official ruling is that he died by suicide awaiting trial in 2019. It was August of 2019. I remember that morning very specifically because the news broke on a Saturday morning. Um, so a lot of people, I think, are waiting for another shoe to drop, for other people to be indicted and things of that nature. So do you think that Maggie Haberman's book kind of stirs up that talk again? And do you think we actually will see other people being charged? charge in relation to this, maybe some famous names? Well, it's been almost a year now since Ghislaine Maxwell's conviction, and the Southern District of New York has been pretty quiet. They never said that the investigation has ended. Uh, yet at the same time, there hasn't been any real activity. What uh, is so tantalizing about Maggie Haberman's scoop is that it reveals that Trump was thinking about this, about his association with Ghislaine Maxwell uh, and Jeffrey Epstein, of course, during the campaign in 2016, the reemergence of the video of him partying with Jeffrey Epstein and the uh, and his long ago comments to the press uh, saying that Jeffrey Epstein loves his social life. In terms of where any criminal investigation will go, I don't know if this moves the needle. Uh, one of the things about all of the names that keep reemerging is that we still don't have that. There, it doesn't really show anything new other than Trump's concern that he that. Ghislaine Maxwell may have said something, according to this account. 
uh, in terms of the investigation, I think all of the folks are eagerly eagerly uh, waiting for SDNY to make a comment about it, and they haven't been shy about it. I know that you may remember Prince Andrew, uh, that federal prosecutors, though Prince Andrew has never been charged or accused of wrongdoing by federal prosecutors, they did make a point to say twice that he wasn't fully cooperative with the investigation as uh, he had claimed in the past. So we know that the prosecutors in Manhattan aren't shy about talking about this investigation when they want to. But here we are nearly two years after Ghislaine Maxwell's trial and not a peep. Yeah, not a peep. That's for sure. And she was just sentenced, you know, not that long ago. We have to keep that in mind. I think it was um, late June uh, that she was sentenced. And, uh, you know, so people have been watching this uh, to see what happens next. And we should mention, you know, that there's never there's all of this has been speculation, obviously, over the years, especially with Prince Andrew, who Adam just mentioned. Prince Andrew, you know, the, the Southern District of New York, the U.S. attorney there said, we want to talk to him. I guarantee you they still want to talk to him. They probably want to talk to anybody related to this that has any information about anything. Um, but going back to uh, then President Trump, apparently this article that raised his or caught his attention or caused him some concern appeared in the New York Post um, in page six. And it was July 4th of 2020. So, you know, Independence Day, uh, this article comes out and caused him some concern. So, uh, it just makes you wonder uh, what more could be going on with this investigation. Of course, Ghislaine Maxwell has said that she will appeal, um, and she is in that process right now, Adam. But do you think there's ever a time where, when let's say her appeals are unsuccessful, do you think Ghislaine Maxwell, since you covered the trial and, and your just observations from that, do you see her ever talking? Well, you know, I've spoken to a lot of former federal prosecutors about it. And the thing about it is that she's now convicted. She stands convicted. So the value, her value to prosecutors, the moment that she's been convicted, if she loses her appeals, it's diminished. So for, former federal prosecutors tell me that essentially the testimony, if someone wants to cooperate at that point, just becomes tainted because it's the incentive is just so easy to undermine that person as a witness if that person were to talk if that person were to name names so i know a lot of people had been sort of uh speculating that she might flip on other people and reveal exactly who was in jeffrey epstein's circle and who might be the next name but the former former federal prosecutors who i've been speaking to have said well, don't really look out for that that much now that she is federally convicted for crimes that will put her away for a very, as we all know now, a very long period of time that has been described by her attorneys as an effective life sentence. Yeah, it, it effectively is a life sentence. Uh, there was another little tidbit in here that was interesting that Maggie ha Haberman wrote about. Um, she wrote and described a December uh, or an early 2015 rather meeting with uh, President Trump and David Pecker, and he was the owner of the National Enquirer. And Maggie Haberman says that Pecker showed up uh, to a meeting with Trump at Trump Tower. He had a copy of the National Enquirer with Prince Andrew and Jeffrey Epstein on the cover. And uh, apparently Trump told Pecker Pecker, I've never been to the island, uh, Jeffrey Epstein's island. He called it, quote, whore island. And it sounded like, uh, according to all of these uh, quotes that Maggie Haberman has dug up, and she's quite the digger, right? She's always getting this information, um, that I guess his biggest concern was running for president, not this, back when this was all going on. Mm, right. And it's always been a big avenue of investigative journalism and speculation who, who was on the island and there's still mystery about that and there's we have the big, flight logs so we have we the flight look. logs of course of course and we also have the fact that the wrangling legal wrangling over the estate is happening in the virgin islands and that the island itself had its reputation was described by the locals as pedophile island uh and so I, I think that it 
there are plenty of juicy details that were unearthed by Maggie Haberman, as usual, uh, in giving us a fuller picture of what's going on in all things Trump-related, insofar as this will lead to new movement in the legal sphere, we just have to wait and see. There's nothing in here that, at least from where I'm sitting, seems to affect a pending legal matter. Right. Uh, it, but it is certainly interesting. Uh, so we'll be keeping an eye on it for sure. I want to say, um, you know, just to clarify, um, Sam Nunberg, one of the advisors to Trump, said that back in 2015, his biggest worry when running for president was the women, uh, not being violent, not business, but the women was the quote she used. Um, and I want to say that I reached out to um, a Trump spokesperson for a comment on this and have not yet heard back. So just wanted to mention that. Adam Klasfeld, thanks, thanks as always for coming on. We always appreciate it. Thanks as always for having me, Antoinette. Always enjoy it. And that's it for this edition of Law and Crime Sidebar Podcast. It is produced by Sam Goldberg and Michael Dininger. Bobby Zoki is our YouTube manager. Melissa Fisher handles our bookings. And Kiara Bronson does our social media. You can find Sidebar on Apple, Google, Spotify, and wherever else you get your podcasts. And of course, you can always watch it on Law and Crime's YouTube channel. I'm Anjanette Levy, and we will see you next time.